Hey everybody, welcome back to the Mixing Guru YouTube page. Today we have another exciting song that we're going to do a very lengthy mix walkthrough with. It's by an artist known as Evan Phillips. He is an Alaskan institution, a singer-songwriter who's been around the block, done a lot of really cool things. This song is called Falling Down. It's from his album called Silhouettes. I helped co-produce and mix this record uh, back in 2014. He released it in May of 2015, and it is just fantastic. Let's have a little listen. Falling down, picking up the pieces where you run around, hanging on for days. I don't mind being patient for a while I don't mind being patient for some time Well you won't catch me Hanging on for dear life no, you won't. Uh, Let's listen to his lead vocal here by itself, dry with no effects. Well, you won't catch me Hanging on for dear life No, you won't catch me Crawling back to you You can lie to protect yourself But baby, it ain't gonna fly We have a short reverb and just, just, just a heads up, I love the Valhalla plugins. So for my short reverb, I have a 0.29 second short delay, which just kind of gives it a room sound. Um, I do a long verb, which is about mm, almost three seconds, a long pre-delay, which is kind of a Chris Lord algae trick. I roll off a lot of the highs here, as you can see over here. This is why I love the Valhalla stuff so much, because it's it's just very customizable. We can change it to 1980s sound, uh, now, but really they all they all sound good. So, and then moving on, um, I'll, I'll always pretty much have a slap delay, especially on kind of a rock song like, like this, just, you know, basically 102 milliseconds one or two on the feedback and that means how many repeats you're going to get and um we do have a verb a reverb throw which i use once in the song basically to kind of woo, woo, kind of throw like a grand canyon kind of sound also we have a delay throw which i use the h delay for i just i love the h delay it's very easy to use it sounds great so if you listen to everything kind of in context I'll show you guys the verb throw here that we have. It's way over here. You had to say goodbye. So you can also hear that I have a delay throw on that too. It's harder to say goodbye. You had to say goodbye. So let's check that out in the mix with everything. See, you can barely hear it. So, we'll just, I'm not going to talk a lot about these bops, but we got these cool little bops. Tell me what you want me to say. I thought my eyes had already told you. Turned around and looked far away just for a while. So that's it for the vocals. Pretty basic. We're not doing anything too insane with any of the processing. I kind of just do your most basic things. Let's get out of vocals here for a second and let's let's head over to drums. I have the drums all bounced to a drum mix, which I like to do because once I get things sounding the way I want, I like to just print them. So here's the drums by themselves. All right, so let's peel open all of the drums. We basically have your typical kick, snare, overhead room, 
Um, I do have a couple samples, one on the kick, one on the snare, and then everything besides the kicks are going through a drum reverb. And all of this stuff is going through a drum bus. And let's listen to it and just mess around with it. There's the regular kick on its own. Sample. Sample on its own. Snare. Snare sample, which is pretty huge. Overheads. Room. And then drum reverb. Sounds pretty crazy, but in the mix, it's really actually pretty chill. So they're all going through a uh, drum bus. And then again, we have the virtual tape machines by Slate. We have the virtual mix rack by Slate as well, which I love. And again, we have the black box analog design, which is just awesome. And again, the inflator which is great. I use it a lot. Right here in this spot would be an insert for my Loop Trotter Saturate 2, which is a piece of outboard gear. It's a stereo saturation unit. And then we have this uh, Pulse Tech. It's like a Pulse Tech. And then we're finishing off with a little bit of this Shadow Hills Plug-in Alliance compressor, which is awesome. Just tons more low end. So we'll get rid of those drums for now. And then we'll just go with my stereo drum stem. And you can hear that by itself again, which is awesome. All right, moving on. We got the bass guitar. Let's bring that in with the drums. You can hear it's pretty heavily processed. Normally I don't go too hard on the compression with bass, but for this one, it just worked. This is Evan playing, I think it might be a Hofner vintage hollow body bass. Got my favorite plugin, the BX console SSL 9000J, which is a newer solid state logic emulation by Brainworks and Plugin Alliance. And after that, we're going into the trusty old CLA bass. This is Chris Lord Algae bass plugin from Waves. It's awesome. And again, another instance of the 9000 SSL, just kind of reinforcing some more EQ. And again, the focus right red, not doing a ton. And then I'm finishing it up with the Wave C4 and I'm doing upward compression on this. Yeah, so it just kind of keeps that low end smooth. Let's go to basically the beginning of what the song is about. This is a stereo stem. Basically, one of them is a high strung Martin vintage acoustic guitar. If you don't know what high strung is, it's uh, more or less the say you had a 12 string guitar and you had the teeny little high strings that are underneath the bigger strings. It's kind of like that. And um, a Gibson J45 which belongs to Evan, which is probably one of the best sounding acoustic guitars I've ever heard. And you blend them together and they sound like this. So for those, I have just very, very simple EQ, a little bit of compression going on, not a lot. Rolling off at about 110 hertz just to get rid of some of the low rumble. And then they're going into the black box actually again. And then I'm using the Arturia plate reverb. Just wanted to kind of give them their own thing. It's an EMT type plate. Leading into Evan's uh, Gibson 335 rhythm guitar part. I, this is a 1970s 335, I, I believe. I don't, I don't know the date, but it's really awesome. Sounds like this. So yeah, it's, you can hear a little crackle on the top end, which normally might be an issue, but it just, in the mix, it's amazing. You won't catch me Hanging on for dear life No, you won't me 
And again, the 9000 general stuff. And then we got a Valhalla Delay, which is one of my favorite plugins of all time. Just doing kind of like a slap delay kind of thing, which is got a little bit of weird wow and flutter to it. Oh, me. If I exaggerate it. Super cool. All right, so next up we have what we call the Tinkly guitar. And this is me on, I believe, a 90s Stratocaster, just kind of doing a basic rhythm in the right ear. Open up my eyes to the highway in the distance. And you can see I'm doing quite a bit to it. If we dry everything up, take all the effects off of it, it sounds like this. Honestly, it sounds better like that, but in the mix, you gotta, you gotta get it to cut through. Whatever it takes, it doesn't matter. There's no rules. It's your choice. Do what you want. But for me and my choice, I decided that I wanted this to cut through, so I had to you know, give it a good amount of little high-end EQ, around 2 to 3 kilohertz, and a bunch of about 5.1, 5.2 kilohertz with the SSL 9000 without rolled off some lows into that Amec, give us some high mids. It's a bit piercing by itself, but throw in the vertical Plugin Alliance compressor and it smooths it out. And then we're ending it with the Spaced Out, which is a baby audio plugin that I love. And then let's head over to the guitar solos. So I played these guitar solos and it took me forever to write them. And you can see that there's essentially four parts to the solo. You have the main one, which I call solo phaser. You can hear me kicking a phaser pedal towards the end. I don't remember which phaser pedal it was. It may be the green boss one, but I'm not sure. And then it leads into a second part of it. And also we have like a harmonics thing, which kind of adds like this weird percussive element to it and leading into a big time crazy neil young whammy part so let's listen to it all together play it soloed so you can kind of hear where it all leads. get too much into the processing or the plugins because it's kind of all pretty typical stuff but I will show you kind of where the first part leads into the second part <laughs>
And then over the top of that, you see this little green guy right here. This comes in, which adds this element of anxiety, for sure. For sure. Yeah, very, very um, stressful. For my guitar solos, it's about creating an emotion, creating a moment, adding to the song, making the song more powerful. And sometimes you got to layer parts. And it doesn't matter if I can't play all of the parts at the same time. It's about the recording. And so there's one last part here called Whammy. All of those together make kind of a really, really cool solo section, which kind of comes out of nowhere. It's pretty intense, pretty awesome. I believe we just got maybe one more thing to talk about, which is this Wurlitzer. I recorded this on an actual vintage Wurlitzer studio. I think I uh, lined it in through probably a Great River preamp, and it sounds like this by itself. So that's pretty heavily processed. It didn't cut through in my mix, so I did some very, very aggressive EQ, as you can see here. <laughs> Looks like Mount Everest. Really, really cool plugin called Tape Mellofy. And then, of course, my red compressor. And then we're finishing it off with the Valhalla delay, doing a cool eighth note delay, which, if you hear it all again, sounds like this without the delay with so that's it for the instruments besides the tambourine but we don't need to talk about the tambourine I'll just go very quickly through my master bus I pretty much always use the virtual tape machine by slate I don't do a lot with it I have a preset it barely pushes it again the black box analog design is amazing, but you see here I got it on 8% mix, barely doing anything, but it just adds a nice little kick. And again, I spent 200 bucks on this plugin, so I'm damn for sure going to be using it. And it's great. I like it. It makes my mixes sound better. Leave that on there. This is one of my secret weapons. This is the Dangerous Backs EQ, modeled after some just unbelievable outboard gear that I'll never, ever, ever be able to afford. It's incredible. Just doing a little bit of low end, about 74, and a little high shelf at 7.1. Normally, I'll be up at 18, but this one just needed the 7.1. And then this is my Alicia Stereo EQ, which this does heavy lifting. I love it. Probably one of my favorite... Um, bus compressors, the townhouse, again, plug-in alliance, the secret weapon, the Ozone 8 mastering module. Basically what I'm doing for this song is I have an exciter, a multi-band exciter, little high, mid, low mid, lows, equalizer, and then it has a vintage limiter, which I'm only using to raise the volume to lead into the maximizer. My first initial peaks hit this thing. And um, then after that, we're doing the old two limiter trick where I have one limiter that's hitting the first stuff, and then the next limiter is hitting the next loudest stuff. And together, they create a very mild push towards loudness. If you have one compressor or limiter just nailing all of the transients, it's going to sound compressed. To end it, this plugin. If you don't have this one, you got to go get it. The AB Metric, my audio system, ADDPR, Plugin Alliance, once again. So that's it for this mix. Again, this is my good buddy, Evan Phillips. He's an Alaskan singer songwriter, a really awesome podcast producer. You got to go check out his podcast, The Fern Line and Alaska Unsolved. And if you guys have any questions, please put them in the comments below. Stay tuned for next week. I'm going to bust out one of my songs, and it's going to be fun. So thank you so much for listening in. I really appreciate it. 
Once again, my name is James Glaves, and this is the Mixing Guru YouTube channel. And I hope you have a really great day, and thank you so much for listening.